talk about your upcoming film project, Alien in the Train Tunnel. Alien in the Train Tunnel is the film that I, uh, well, I, I wrote it years ago, um, you know, scene by scene, piece by piece. So I'd say over the, the past 10 years, I've, you know, put these scenes together. And finally, we're at a, a stage now where I decided to start shooting the film. Um, so it is, you know, underway. Production has started. And, uh, yeah, hopefully the, the rest of it goes smoothly. Because um, it's, it's the biggest project I have uh, ever committed myself to, to date. Like an album, that's a big thing. You know, making albums, uh, music videos, those aren't too bad because, you know, you can get those, wrap those up in, uh, you know, sometimes even one day. Um, and then editing would take maybe a couple more days. Who knows? Depends on the video. Point being, a, the film is, a, it's like all my projects have led up to this almost, I want to say, final project, Alien in the Train Tunnel. Um, something I've wanted to do for many, many years. And finally just decided, what the fuck, you know? We got to do it. So here we are. So hopefully next year, 2024, this whole thing will be wrapped up with the shooting and then the editing. And of course, I'm going to make the score for the film as well. You know, that comes, uh, you know, we got to shoot it first and then it's then all that other stuff comes together. It seems like um, the alien has been shown very briefly in one of your music videos from the Voodoo album. What was the name of that song again? I'm Awake. So the I'm Awake music video is almost like a teaser um, for Alien in the Train Tunnel. It's, it's kind of kind of gives you a taste of what Alien in the Train Tunnel is going to be like. Because, um, of course, there's an alien in the train tunnel in that music video. Um, so, just thought I would try, it's almost like that was a trial run. The music video for I'm Awake is, is kind of a trial run to put an alien in a train tunnel. Does that make sense? Like the trial run of that? It, yeah. Very much so. Very much so. <laughs> now, the follow-up to that. I'm curious, would the song I'm Awake be available in clips in the actual movie? Because it relates to it. Oh, uh, I'm Awake is just a, a taste. It's, it has nothing to do with, with the film. Um, Alien in the Train Tunnel. It's simply just a taste. Uh, so the song won't be incorporated in the film or anything like that. Uh, the music's going to be all original, of course. I'm working on the music now because, uh, you know, I'm very eager to get, get this project wrapped up. I'm going to try, try to enjoy it, though. But, like all projects, um, my favorite part is when I finish them. And a, lo a lot of people, you know, say, what's well, the journey? It's the journey of the projects. It's like, ah, not for me. It's finishing them. And then moving on to the next project. I don't really like the journey. <laughs> 
Sounds entirely reasonable. Yeah. But you do have one project that's finished now, and that is the Voodoo album. Yeah. And when is that coming out? That's coming out in just a few days from now, Halloween uh, 2023, which is, uh, was that Tuesday? Yes. I'm looking at the day, today's day. Yeah, that's Tuesday. So, you know, hope you get, hope you like it. And who are you, by the way? Why don't you tell us who you are? Natalie Morning, right? Correct. And that's all you need to know. The spotlight is not on me. <laughs> well, the sunlight is hitting both of us. I like asking questions. Speaking of journeys, can you expand on the journey, whether you liked it or not, mm -hmm. for the Voodoo album? Okay, Voodoo. It's like parts of Voodoo came together smoothly and then other parts took a while. Some songs, I would say, I, I started recording some of the songs in 2020. Uh, like, the, like the skeleton of the song I had. But then I just left it, you know, just kind of sat on it for a while. And then once the album started to kind of come together, you know, those songs that I started, uh, you know, a couple years prior, they just kind of, yeah, it's like now I know what to do with them because um, a couple of them are totally different than what they used to be. Yeah, there was, there was a lot of starting and stopping with the album. Kind of like our trip to get here today. You had to turn around because you missed an exit. That's right. That's, you know, one thing about Ted is he misses exits. That's what he does. <laughs> and, you know, where are we? Let's see. We are in a very, um, how, should we, how should we say that? Historical. <laughs> uh, Rose Phantom history, that is. Um... This is the mine where the Dead Ringers album cover was shot. This is also the Solus experiment uh, in the music video. I think the I answered journey it. to construct Voodoo album. Oh yeah, overall though it was it was a pretty you know it was a smooth process I'd say, other than a couple of tracks that went through that kind of limbo period. It went through a lot of stages, um, like Darkness, the single Darkness. I had Sick Boy rap on it. Uh, that was actually going to be on Voodoo. It was going to be the first track on Voodoo. Um, with the rap and everything. But that track, not to digress from, from Voodoo, but Darkness is kind of how Voodoo started. Uh, so if you listen to that single, it has the same kind of vibe and production as Voodoo. Because it was meant to be a part of Voodoo. Uh, you know, with kind of the hard industrial electronic vibe that it has. But that track, I, st I recorded the bulk of it in 2020, and it just sat for, you know, a couple of years until I could find the right rapper to rap on it. Um, you know, someone to come over we collaborate on the lyrics and then get a good performance out of them. And I, I gave up on it for the longest time because I couldn't find 
the right guy. Uh, and then, you know, Sick Boy came along and it just kind of, it just worked out. And, you know, he was a nice guy and everything, so. He doesn't sound so nice in the song. He doesn't, no. But that was my direction. I was telling him, you know, don't hold back, you know. Just, yeah. And I was, was like, I want you to drop, drop as many F-bombs as you can. <laughs> Darkness starts off as electronic, but industrial and rap. And then it transforms into something Mm -hmm. more trance-like, mm -hmm. without any vocals at all anymore. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of the classic Rose Phantoms theremin in there, mm -hmm. and a bit of the Jean-Michel Jarre yeah. feel in there. Yeah. Um, of course, I, I, I enjoy Sick Boy's contribution, but the best part, we, we can say, of the darkness single is the last half. That's that's where that track shines. It's almost like the, the Sick Boys contribution with the rapping and everything. That that kind of just gets us started, and then we get to the the important part. I want to say, which is the more for me blissful part of the track. It, it's almost it's dark, but it's also pretty. You know what I mean? And, and that's something you'll find in a lot of my music. Where, yeah, it's, it's a darker tone. But if, you are, if you're really listening, it's like the chords and stuff. I mean, it's, it's actually very beautiful. <laughs> At least I think it is. It's very serene and... You know, it, this is where words, this is where I struggle, is trying to explain how, how doing that, how putting something beautiful into a darker tone, it almost opens a new door to a different realm. It does feel like it, it resolves a little bit, offers a bit of hope um, in a couple seconds of the uplifting melody. Yeah. It does feel like that. Yeah. I call it just the more ethereal moments that it, it's kind of, it's almost meant to wash over you and it's almost like it takes the gravity of, of, of life away. It, that's what it does for me. This is why I share the music to begin with. It's, it's for those moments. Yeah, the, the rap is fun and it's a throwback to early 90s trip hop, you know. Um, Kind of has like the Chemical Brothers vibe to it, as well as Prodigy. That's kind of what I was going for for that. But once we're past that, like I said earlier, it's the important element comes in and lifts you into more of this ethereal space. You know, kind of like. If I was to turn the camera around and you could see the sunlight hitting the the mountain there. Yes. That when I see that, especially from this view here, I hear I hear music when I see that. So that's very inspiring. Because that does what the music does. It lifts certain chords on the piano has the same effect as what I'm seeing in front of me here. And that's the whole, my whole career has been to try and bottle that, capture that, sonically capture that. 
you know, because that's a visual piece. How do we, what does that sound like? And I can tell you what it doesn't fucking sound like. You know, I, you know. Taylor Swift? Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, Taylor, all that, okay. Top 40, whatever, you know, all the bullshit these days. That's what it doesn't sound. If you were to play that kind of shit now, I'd probably puke right here. I just, I just fucking puke. Cause that is, you know, there's, there's only a few artists that can express that sonically. David Sylvian being one of them, the Gone to Earth album. If, if that was playing right now, I would even, I would say that we could transport. We would transport, if we put David Sylvian's Gone to Earth on right now, we would transport into a different realm. And I've seen this happen with, with, my, with my own eyes. <laughs> In fact, I was, uh, I was telling, I tell a lot of people this, you know, when they get me going on this, this kind of topic, they said, this is, a, it's almost a form of spirituality, you know? Almost. And it's like, yeah, actually, I could say that. that this is my spirituality right here. This is what I fucking believe in. Okay? I don't believe in any of the, the bullshit. You know, the religions and the, the, the Bible and you know, the Jesus shit. I don't believe that. That just doesn't matter when you're looking at, at that. It doesn't matter. None of that man-made bullshit matters. Anyway. You live in Salt Lake City where you were born and raised. How do you reconcile the two? Your need to be in this world, to join this world, and at the same time Try to escape the mediocrity. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck trying to, to escape it. Uh, and it's it's just stifling. It, it's, it strips the magic out of the deeper elements of life. Like, you know, for example, like this landscape we're looking at. There's nothing more that I could possibly ask for, you know, while looking at that. What more could you want? If we were to have development happen here, housing development, you know, Walmarts, whatever, it would change the entire mood. It would strip the magic out of the landscape. That's what people do. That's what development does. It robs. And I've seen this happen in some of my favorite places. In fact, I, you know, just past uh, Sunday, I was in one of my, my favorite canyons, you know, even just 10 years ago, no one would go there. I would be the only soul around every time I'd go there. I've been going there for 20 plus years. But when I was there, just last Sunday, I, it broke my heart. It's just like, it was insane how many people were there. And this is why in the past years, when you credited that place, you would simply um, label it as the place to be. You the kept place it to be. Secret. Yeah, it's, it was almost like it felt like my own little, my own little, you know, sanctuary, and no one would, no one would be there. Um, it's just different now because the valley has grown. The Salt Lake Valley has grown because this canyon is is kind of on the outskirts of the valley. And the valley is just growing. Of course, it's becoming overpopulated. And it's, it's a very sad thing. So when I was there at the canyon, 
Um, it's a very special place to me because I recorded an album there. I've shot countless music videos there, photo shoots. I've had you know other personal stuff happen there. Um, I couldn't feel the land when I was there the other day. I couldn't feel it. It's because there's so much commotion, I want to say. It's, like I said, it strips the magic. The essence of the landscape gets stripped when there's a lot of people in commotion. And I, like, like I said, I couldn't, I couldn't feel the land. And that's a place that I've felt deeply for many years. And it's just, it's just very, it's just sad. It's like, where, where am I to go? Where am I to go? And of course, you know, I could hear the music that was playing in, in some of the cars driving by on the road. And oh my God, it just, it just makes me want to fucking puke. It really upsets me. You don't, okay, you can listen to whatever you want. I don't care what people listen to, because most of us just try, right? But don't, <laughs> don't bring, don't bring that trite to such a special place. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You don't do that, but people, it's like they're, they just, the awareness is at, you know, fucking zero. People are being advertised to that nature is wonderful, so they go out there to appreciate it. Right. And this is what happens. Yeah. It, it has the opposite effect, ultimately. Yeah, it's, it's like, hey, these landscapes, these places are amazing. Utah's amazing. Move here. Come on, everybody. Move to Utah. It's amazing. Look at the nature. It's like, yeah, it is. It's fucking amazing. Um, let's, let's keep it amazing. You know, if everyone's moving here, which they're doing, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so you against yourself here again. My my uh, my buddy the other day told me I was talking. I'm always t you know complaining about this, but he said, "Well, this is your fault. You know why? Because in all your music videos, you're showing off how great Utah is." He's like, "So part of it's my fault." <laughs> and then I have to tell him, "Well, I'm not getting. You know, it's not like I'm getting millions of views on my on my videos." Um, which is part of the problem, you know. Look at what is getting millions of views. It's just the balance of everything. It's just so fucked up. We're living in such fucked up times. And like everybody knows, like you know, um, I don't, yeah, I don't belong in these times. And I, I feel that. I've Where always do you felt see that. yourself? When? When? Actually, when do you see yourself ideally? It's not just one time period that I can see myself in. It's, you know, it could be 1989. I could fantasize about 1989 and 1990. That's like a peak. Well, you there only was a peak. get to ask for one year at a time. Let's pretend there's a portal <laughs> here because this cave really feels there is a it's portal. Be a portal. There is a portal here. Uh, it's just it's a mood portal, of course. In order to access the portal that is located here, we would have to apply the right music, because music opens doors. That's that's what music is. So if I was equipped, I could open the portal here. Now the the struggle, I, I would say, is how do we live in that portal for more than a few seconds? That's the struggle. That's a whole other thing. But as for time periods, yeah, I could fantasize about 80, 1989, 1990, 
you know, 91, 92, 93. Further back, 80s, early 80s, 70s, 60s, 50s, uh, 1800s, you know, <laughs> it's just early 1900s. You I mean, collect photos of old Salt Lake City I from do. as far back as 60s, maybe even earlier. Yeah, as far back as uh, early 1900s. And some, some are from, uh, you know, 1890s and stuff, 1880s. That fascinates me to see what Salt Lake was like. And I deeply yearn when I see those photos. That's, that's where I belong. I belong there at that time. When that photo was taken, you know, a hundred years ago, <laughs> that's where, that's where I need to be. In the photo, you, you see that photo in your mind's eye from that era, but how can you tell anyone else, what do you physically see that appeals to you? Is it the lack of traffic? Is it the wide streets? It's, it's a number of things, of course. Um, it's almost like, I feel like I could breathe, if that makes sense, to fantasize, see the photograph, and then fantasize about being there. It reduces my anxiety that comes from living in this time, which is a very hard time to live in. I don't know why I'm here. Uh, but to answer the question, it's a simpler time, and that's that's what I, especially the older I get, I like simplicity. You know, before the fucking distractions, the phones, and the the internet and uh, now I'm starting to sound like <laughs> things changed even more once the smartphone came out in what was that 2007 uh, I remember an iPhone 2006 yes 2006 yeah because I, I would say a big shift happened after 9-11 which as you know a lot of other people you know, agree with that. Um, it's a real thing. But to get back to the looking at the photograph, society was better. And I know that's a that's a bold thing to say. Um, and there's people that like to argue with me on this, but there's really no argument. It's like, you know, we know society was better. Even the trash was better back then. And I'm, I'm speaking um, not only for the stuff we put in landfills, because you know we have a lot more plastics these days uh, in the last 50 years or so. The trash was better back then. And that goes for people and what we put in the landfill. This is a, it, this is a big topic, you know. Uh, so many things get conjured up in me when, when we, we speak of this sort of thing. One of them being, these days, we don't have any, any more, there's no heroes. There's no icons. Except on screen. Well, but that, that's, you know. Fictional heroes, toys, yeah, distractions, yeah. merchandise. Unless it's contrived, like this is, idolize this person. It's not like it used to be. Like, for example, you know, where's the next John Wayne? Okay. John Wayne is an American hero. Um, we don't, we don't have that in today's world. There's, there's nothing like that. We still have Clint Eastwood. He's a hero. Guys like that, you know, like integrity, you know, uh, 
poster boy for America. We don't have that. We don't have any of that. That's a problem, you know. Instead, people are idolizing themselves. It's worshiping of the self, thanks to social media and the smartphone. Yes. Yeah. So why do people need a hero? They don't. It's themselves. This creates narcissists. We're, and, yes. and they're everywhere, even more so. And they've always been around, of course, but it's everywhere now. And part of that is due to not having a hero for yourself. I was raised with heroes. I, and I still have many heroes, okay? That's important. It's a very important thing to have a hero. All I am is kind of a collection of all my heroes. I feel it's very important. If I had more power, if I had an army, we'll say the army of Tet, it would be for good, you know, good things, protecting what we're seeing here. We need to protect that. That's, it's so vulnerable. We need to protect that from all the developers and, and you know, the greedy motherfuckers. Same goes with, um, you know, down, down south where they're doing all, all the fracking and stuff. I don't care if our resources are, you know, running out. You're not touching this land. Too late. Uh, yeah, well, in some areas, there's still, there's still hope. It's just an unfortunate thing, but it's really the only thing left to protect. Because uh, human, we're fucked. We just are. Um, and I know a lot of people, oh, that, he's so negative. I'm real. I'm not. I'm. I'm real. I'm just being. Re we are. In fact, we've always been fucked, but we're. We're even more fucked now. <laughs> this explains all the distractions. They don't want humanity to know what is real. Well, yeah. I mean, hence and, all the noise and the trash. Yeah. I mean, why would you? You might as well distract yourself. You know. In the meantime, they're just being dumbed down. You know. I'm telling you, staring at that screen. And that, you know, I'm a victim to this too. I, you know, cause we have to use these tools in this world, which is a shame. Even, you know, getting concert tickets, you have to, it's all on the, the phone. Nothing's real anymore. I can't have a tangible thing. You know, it's like, it's you gotta be on this screen, just glued to that fucking screen. You know, back then thing, everything was tangible and things were, were made well, I'm talking about all kinds of things, cars, houses, things used to be built very well. These days, these new houses that everyone's buying up, uh, cheap pieces of shit. Actually, I should, I should say expensive pieces of shit because they're getting all the money in the world for them, but God, they're fucking cheap. And just looking at them, you can see the cheapness. It just emanates. From, from these new houses. The framework uh, and plywood going up. Oh, the wood. It's like yeah. Ikea furniture. Yeah, it's seriously, it's like Ikea ha houses. Just, just, they just slap them up too. They just, you know, in a couple of days, the house will just be, <laughs> be there. And I've seen this happen. And it's just cheap shit. The materials are just fucking cheap plastics and the, the vinyl, the white tacky vinyl. Why do people buy those, the vinyl fences? You know, we can't have a wood fence. Heaven forbid, we have to have the fucking cheap, just tacky. Take a house that's 100 years old now, right? It's got character, it's well built, it's unique. It's a work of art. 100 years from now, let's take one of these cookie cutter pieces of shit houses. <laughs> Is it even still gonna be standing? You know, maybe when that huge earthquake I've been hearing about my whole fucking life hits Salt Lake, you know, those houses don't stand a fucking chance. And good, you know, they shouldn't even be there in the first place. It should be open land like it used to be. It really angers me. I just wonder sometimes, am I, am I alone with 
my distaste for seeing this. When I see it, it really hurts me. It, it just, because I know what it was 10 years ago. It, you know, an open field with, you know, the mountain, you know, in the distance and the sun shining and serene and a chance for a chance for mood to overtake you a chance for the landscape to talk to you not anymore we got to put houses on it we got to protect the landscapes we got to go back to the landline and get rid of the cell phones I, we do it's it's i know it's like this guy's insane no this will help us it really will it will be better for society okay this so, connecting will help connect us in other ways exactly this is my pitch if i was to run for president i would i'd ban smartphones <laughs> people would hate me if i was the president <laughs> homeland security would hate you we're going back to landlines and they're trying to get rid of cash so we're gonna let me stop you right there ted yeah walls have ears but i'm glad stones don't <laughs> cash is king remember that so don't you know when you go to the bank get cash every time keep it going that's a whole other, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. What's next for Ted besides the army of Ted? You claim that Voodoo is your last album, but it might not be. Well, uh, well Voodoo is likely my last album. Like I've had to tell many people, it's just not economically viable for me to be doing this at this rate and also the stress level that comes with what I do. I love doing it and of course I do it for myself and I, lo I love to share it because I, I believe that there's, um, there's a depth within it that should be shared. It's an uphill climb that's just, you know, the incline is just getting steeper and steeper as the years go by. and. and it's, uh, it's called lack of, just lack of support. And it's the same old story. And it, it's like, how, how many years do you wanna do this? I mean, it's been 20 plus years and we're still climbing uphill here and fighting to be heard and as the world gets noisier and noisier and it seems like people don't need musicians anymore. They just, music's not as important as it used to be. This is from what I've seen and experienced. It's not as sacred as it once was. I just don't see it. I don't see that you will really, really ever stop. Well, technically, I'm not stopping after Voodoo. I mean, yeah, Voodoo, I say, is my last album, but we, shortly after, we will have uh, the Curse EP, a four-track EP. Curse is kind of a companion to Voodoo. That's set for release next year, so probably Valentine's Day uh, 2024. Yeah, because I'm such a romantic. Man. All I ever needed was your touch But the distance grew between us